Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, my desire was to get into a teaching on the spirits and the attacks that are going on. And so I'm still going to have to do that video. Uh, but the more I begin to prepare for tonight's broadcast, the more that I realized it's still going to get into a teaching, but we're going to be looking at some different documents tonight. Uh, including the Dead Sea Scrolls. We'll be looking at the Colbrin, and although I know it is called the Colbrin Bible, as I've said before, I don't like to use that terminology um, because to me it's not the Bible. It is the, the, the document of the Colbrin, and it does have some very uh, interesting historical documentation about Planet X. I need to get into that because in the Dead Sea Scrolls, you're going to find out their interpretation of some of the passages in the Bible clearly indicate the passing of Planet X. And I ran across that as I was preparing tonight, which definitely took me down a different direction. Uh, makes me think of Malachi 3 as well. The earth burning like a fire and the judgment uh, of God, etc. going on. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, the star, of course, falling from heaven there, uh, which we know is actually uh, some kind of person because it refers to him in a him, a personal pronoun. And then, of course, you get here on BNO News, meteorite explodes over Israel in the West Bank. Now, I know this has nothing to do with that star coming down, but I just thought it was kind of fitting that here I am preparing the message for today, and I get the meteorite explodes over Israel and the West Bank there in broad daylight, causing a sonic boom in the country there. There's a picture of it there. I did have a video, uh, I am sure, let me just see on Twitter here, I'm sure that they're showing some... Uh, different things there. Let me just pop up the word meteorite here. A meteor, meteor is the way I did it earlier. Uh, I think I did a video and there was a video of it, but you know, it's kind of hard to catch these things here. Let me just try meteor Israel. I think that's the way I did it earlier. There was one video footage of this thing coming in. Uh, here it is right here, this one here. So let it play again. There it goes. And it burst across the skies of Israel there. Uh, so I just thought it was kind of interesting, like I said, you know, that it just so happens to happen as I'm preparing this particular footage. So uh, pretty pretty neat there. And I'll just retweet that for those of you that follow us there on Twitter. And uh, by the way, if you if you don't know about following us on Twitter, here we are right there, Israeli News Live at Stephen Denoon, D-E-N-O-O-N. Um, and also, I'll just remind you, though, just before we get started here, those of you that want to support the broadcast, your help is greatly appreciated. So, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our, our address is always at the top of the screen, right above my head there, Stephen Ben Noon, and that's B-E-N-N-U-N, -N uh, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Of course, you can always donate online. It's a little faster if that's the way you feel on your heart. But we really appreciate it, and believe me, it is your kindness that makes all these things possible. Somebody had wrote in the comments, uh, before, I ended up having to turn the comments off on this other video that I did in, on Israeli News Live. And, and really and truly, I'm probably going to end up taking it down because I just wasn't ready, and I just did a terrible, terrible job on that video there. The real purpose I was wanting to be able to show, uh, it wasn't a matter about who's first or what, nothing to do with that. It's just showing how the, the corroboration or, or, you know, or the mic just really seems to corroborate the information that I've been sharing for quite some time on our Patreon channel. Uh, but I did do the video on Patreon today that I said I was going to do. Who opened the door for the devil? And on this one, I had everything laid out. It was really ready, very well prepared. I think it'll be a blessing for many of you that want to watch that there. Uh, so in the description, as usual, the uh, link to Patreon uh, forward slash at Israel or forward slash Israeli News Live. That's how you find it. But I think you'll really enjoy that. But it's because of this information that I'm really doing a lot of biblical searches there. And like I said, when I had the other video opened on comments there, uh, I'd gotten one comment about the sixth seal. So maybe we'll touch into that a little bit as well. Let's look at this first. Revelation chapter 9. 
And then we're going to look at some very shocking information here, especially the Dead Sea Scrolls. That one has blown me away. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. To him. It's a star falling, but him, he gets the key. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. That's one reason why I wanted to bring up the Colbrin, because when it talks about the way Planet X passes, and we're going to look at the past as well as uh, the future one, that really makes you do some scratching your head. It says that, And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, and the scorpions of the earth, ha as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, in light of the idea of the locust, you have to understand the passing of this binary system definitely comes with locusts, even as we'll see in the, uh, I don't think I actually have that part of the Colburn pulled up when it talked about when this system passed uh, during the times of, of Moses and the Exodus. They actually claimed that it happened during that time. Uh, I, I do believe that Malachi is actually referring to that uh, to during that time of events as well. So there is a good possibility that that was the the loop of the planet. So just a thought. Keep these things in mind. And believe me, you're going to need an open mind on what we're talking about tonight, really and truly. It was commanded to them they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee, for, uh, flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. A locust the size of a horse? Face of a man? It's not just some little bug. But even if we are looking at locust, you know, if we look at the melting of the permafrost, one of the things that Mike mentioned up there near Russia that, you know, watch for locust up there. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about that. Even we've actually brought that out as well. The locust will be coming this year, but that's actually a thing that happens every so many years anyway on the earth. So it's nothing unusual, but he's talking about it from the melting permafrost. Uh, maybe so. I, I really don't know the answer to that at all, but, um, if you go on down, though, and get into the sixth seal, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay a third part of men. Now, that's the important part. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and jasoneth and brimstone, and heads of horses, whereas the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and their tails, for their tails were likened to or serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Now, you keep in mind, John, you know, going back all these years ago, 2,000 years ago, him trying to describe what he sees in these visions. Could this be possibly the passing of what we call Planet X, Nibiru, Ninth Planet is what the government will call it? Uh, very good question. Very good question, and whether or not knowing the right answer to this, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, as I said to you, if we look at the Colbrin here, and I just pop it up on the screen, I do have highlighted portions that I wanted to share with you. One of the things it talks about is the Destroyer. But I want to bring up for you, though, uh, let's see here. Now, we're at, this is the Dead Sea Scrolls. Let me pop past the Dead Sea Scrolls first. I want to get into the Colbrin first, and then we're going to come back to the Dead Sea Scrolls as well. All right, this here is the, um, this is, I believe, the, and I'm only going to be reading just a little portion of this for you, of when it passed in previous times, and I think this is referring to the time, um, I don't know if it's during the time, uh, this one is actually the time during, um, the flood, or if it was the time during the Exodus. 
Uh, I'm not, I don't, don't recall for sure, but let me just read to you what it says here. There were some who struggled harder and were more disciplined because their forefathers had crossed the, uh, the great dark void. Now, I think that is, a, is implying to the Andaluvian destruction, the flood. Their desires were turned Godward and they were called the children of God. Their country was un- inundated and enforested. It was fertile, having many rivers and marshes. And there were great mountains to the east and to the west and the north and was vast stony plain. Then came the day when all things became still and apprehensive. For God caused a sign to appear in the heavens so that men should know the earth would be afflicted. And the sign was a strange star. Now, by the way, when it says strange star, when I look at Revelation 9 and a star fell from heaven and him that had it had a key, I don't know. Let's think of just just a thought, right? There's a strange star. The star grew and waxed to a great brightness and was awesome to behold. So it takes time. This thing's coming in. It's not just there in the same day. It put forth horns and sang, being unlike any other ever seen. You remember the the images of Nibiru, the winged planet? That would be like the horns that they would talk about. So men seeing it said among themselves, Surely this is God appearing in the heavens above us. The star was not God. Though it was directed by his design, but the people had not the wisdom to understand. I highlighted that in green because if you notice, it's directed by his design. In other words, it'll bring about the judgment that has been prophesied, but it's not the true father. Then God manifested himself in the heavens. His voice was as the roll of thunders. And he was clothed with smoke and fire. He carried lightnings in his hand, and his breath falling upon the earth brought forth brimstone and embers. His eye was black void with his mouth an abyss containing the winds of destruction. He encircled the whole of heavens, bearing upon his back a black robe adorned with stars. Now, when it says there, then God manifests himself in the heavens, I still don't think it's talking about the true father. I think in this case here, because they thought it was God, that now the narrator of this book is writing it in their way of thinking. Could be wrong, but I believe that's correct. Such was the likeness and manifestation of God in those days. Awesome was his countenance, terrible his voice of wrath. The sun and the moon hid themselves in fear. There was a heavy darkness over the face of the earth. God passed through the spaces of heavens above with a mighty roar and a loud trumpeting. Then came the grim dead silence and the black red lit twilight of doom. Great fires and smoke rose up from the ground and men gasped for air. The land was rent asunder and swept clean by a mighty deluge of waters. And hole opened up in the middle of the land and the waters entered in and sank beneath the sea. I mean, this is crazy, right? I mean, absolutely wild. Um, this is another portion of it. And I want to read this part too. The mountains of the east and the west were split apart and stood up in the midst of the waters which raged about and the north land tilted and turned over on its side. Then again, the tumult and clamor ceased and all was silent in the quiet stillness. Madness broke out among men Frenzy and shouting filled in the air. They fell upon one another in senseless wanton bloodshed. Neither did they spare woman or a child, for they knew not what they did. Notice that they didn't even realize what they were doing. They ran unseeing, dashing themselves to destruction. They fled to caves and were buried and taken refuge in trees. They were hung. There, were, there was rape, murder, and violence of every kind. The deluge of waters swept back and the land was purged clean. Rain beat down unceasingly and there were great winds surging. Waters overwhelmed the land and man and his flocks and his garden and all his works ceased to exist. Some of the people were saved upon the mountainsides and upon the floatsome, but they were scattered far apart over the face of the earth. 
They fought for survival in the lands of uncouth people and amid coldness they survived in caves and sheltered places. You know, one of the things that I was being told early on is that this uptick in violence, this this demonic entities and their ability because of the opening of these dimensions and things of that nature, they're allowing demons in like never before. One of the things that I shared on Patreon some time back is how that um, the, 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 the government was seeing a, a rise in violent crimes and things like that, especially out West. And of course, I think I did that in the fracking video there. What uh, CIA learned from fracking, they believed that that water on the inner earth was a barrier from those spirits that are trapped inside the earth, but it was loosing them. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. I have no clue. Now, in this particular portion here, this is where it's going to be speaking about, I believe this is the future coming of this system once again. And this is where I want you to kind of pay close attention. And then we're going to get into the Dead Sea Scrolls and we're going to be going into other biblical passages as well concerning this. This is chapter three, three called The Destroyer, part one. Men forget the days of the destroyer. Only wise know where it went. And that it will return in its appointed hour. It raged across the heaven in the days of wrath, and this was its likeness. There's a billowing cloud of smoke, enwrapped in a ruddy glow, indistinguishable in joint or limb. Its mouth was an abyss from which came flame, smoke, and hot cinders. When age passed, certain laws operate upon the stars in the heavens. Their waves change. There is movement and restlessness. They are no longer constant and great light appears readily in the skies. You know, last year, I was told that the system would be entering our solar system by September. As far as I know, that actually did take place. The system has already moved in. Now, again, that takes maybe a year or two to get across. And they were saying that, that what they're watching for is the different uh, planets and stuff and how they'll be nudged and moved around as a result of that. And believe it or not, intelligence tends to use ancient documents to try to get a feel for what they're anticipating that is coming goes on to say, When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed, and living things engulfed, and waters will be swallowed up by the land, and seas will boil. The heavens will burn brightly and redly. There will be a copper hue over the face of the land, followed by a day of darkness. A new moon will appear and break up and fall. The people will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet and battle cry of the destroyer and will seek refuge within dens uh, uh, in the earth. Terror will eat away their hearts and their courage will flow from them like water from a broken pitcher. They will be eaten up in the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. Now what's really interesting is what's going to be written here in the next two lines here. Thus it was in the days of the heavenly wrath which have gone, and thus it will be in the days of doom when it comes again. The times of its coming going are known unto the wise. These are the signs and times which shall precede the destroyer's return. A hundred and ten generations shall pass into the west, and nations will rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds, and swim in the seas as fishes. Men will talk peace one with another. Hypocrisy and deceit shall have their, way, have their day. And women will be as men and men as women. Passion will be playing a, play, a plaything of man. A nation of soothsayers shall rise and fall. Their tongue shall 
be the speech learned, and a nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth. I th we are definitely living in a day where men fly in the air like birds and swim in the seas like fish. They didn't have that. Um, and I forget exactly how far back the oldest copy of this book goes. I think it's several hundred years at least. Um, uh, supposedly it goes back during the times of Christ, but I, I do not have any clue if that's true or not. Um, it is an old book. I do know that. It is a book that, uh, as far as the age of it, I believe is predates anything that we would have for modern technology. So again, like I said, more of a, um, it's more of a historical document than anything. That's the way I take it. All right, we're going to come back here. Let me first go back, see where we're at over here. Um, we're going to be looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls, and this is where we're at over here. I didn't actually pull up the very one that we're at here, but the Dead Sea Scrolls, where you can search it online, it's got both the Hebrew and the English in there for you to be able to look at that if you ever decide you want to do so. But the one we're going to be looking at is going to be referring to the scriptures here of Isaiah chapter 10. And when you look at this from the Dead Sea Scrolls, and when I say the Dead Sea Scrolls, because the Qumranite community there is going to give you the interpretation of this scripture. I'm going to first read it right here from the Bible. And then we're going to go look at the way it's written in the Dead Sea Scrolls and their interpretation of certain passages. So let's begin. Isaiah chapter 10, starting with verse 16. Therefore will the Lord... The Lord of hosts in among his fat ones leanness. And under his glory there shall be kindled a burning light, burning of fire. And the light of Israel shall be for fire and his holy one for a flame. It shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. The glory of his forest and his fruitful field, he will consume both soul and body, and it shall be as when a sick man wasteth away. The remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them down. It shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and they that are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. A remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto God the mighty. El Gibor. Hmm. For though thy people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them shall return. An extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. By the way, verse 21, when a remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto God the mighty. I find that very interesting right there. Yashuv Sha'ah Yaakov El El Gibor. Do you know what Jesus is referred to in Isaiah chapter 9? He is referred to as El Gibor. Besides the Prince of Peace, he is the El Gibor, the mighty God. Will it be that at the time of the passing of this planet, this demonic influence, that many of the ancestors of those that once believed that Jesus was the Messiah will return to him. Think about it. For though thy people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them shall return, and extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. Pay attention to that one right there. An extermination is determined? For an extermination wholly determined shall the Lord, the God of hosts, make in the midst of the earth. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of a sure. Though he smite thee with the rod and lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt. 
you know, as sure as is, is is modern Syria and Iran, Iraq, all them. He's he's telling Zion, he's telling Israel, don't be afraid of them. And he's letting you know this is going to happen at a time when they're going to smite you with a rod. For yet a very little while, and the indignation shall be accomplished, and mine anger shall be to their destruction. Wow. Okay, before I go to the Dead Sea Scrolls, I'm going to take you to Malachi. Now, if you're reading in the King James, you're going to go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, right through verse 5 or 6, something to that effect. In the Tanakh, it's in the chapter 3. There is no chapter 4, and it begins in verse 19. For behold, the day cometh, it burneth as a furnace, and all the proud and all the work wickedness shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall set them ablaze, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in its wings. And you shall go forth and gamble as calves of the stall. I thought that was interesting. The Shemesh Tzadikah Um Rofe Bekanafiah. I normally think of Jesus when I think of this. But you know, they also say about Planet X, it's a failed star. It's a dwarf star. They call it, uh, in other words, like another sun, but it's kind of lost its spark. And again, it's called the winged planet. I, I don't know what to think about that, but I will show you something, though, that did catch my attention. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I do make, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, even statutes and ordinances. We're going to come back to that after we do the Dead Sea Scrolls, that one right there. I always wondered, why, why did God and in, in, in all of his wisdom decide to tell you, remind you about Moses when we're reading about destruction and ashes and burning of the planet and everything else and all this judgment? Why does he talk about Horeb for all Israel, even the statutes and the ordinances, right? There's, I think there's a reason for that, and you're going to see it when we go to Deuteronomy and read it. He says, Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now don't forget, as I've said to you on many of the videos I did on the two witnesses, Jesus puts the coming of Elijah in the future when John the Baptist is already dead. When they come to him, they said, Doesn't the scripture say that Elias must first come? And Jesus says, truly, Elias will come and restore all things. But he says, but I say unto you, he's come already. And they did to him what was listed. Now he's talking about John the Baptist. But while John the Baptist is dead, he's saying that he will come and restore all things. And that's supposed to happen, what, before this terrible day? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the land with an utter destruction. A chorim. Now, Jesus only applied to John turning the heart of the fathers to their children. He never applied the turning of the heart of the children to their fathers. Never did. So hold that in your mind. Let's go to the Dead Sea Scrolls now. And again, remember, the Dead Sea Scrolls is going to mirror Isaiah chapter 10, where we were just reading. And I want you to see with the Kumarnite community how they spoke of this. So let's blow it up so you guys can see it. I'm going to start above in the fragment above here. Like fuel for the fire, no one forgives his brother. He destroys to the right and remains hungry, and he consumes to the left and is not satiated. A man eats the flesh of his arm. Manasseh against Ephraim, Ephraim against Manasseh, the two together against Judah, and with all this, his wrath is not mollified. 
A quote from Isaiah 10, verse 19. Will be and a young man will count them. And you got a blank spot. Now, let's ease, we're going to ease back and forth. Let's go to verse 19. And the remnant of the trees of his forest shall be a few that a child may write them down. That's where he's quoting from. What does he say about it? He said, the interpretation of the word concerns the edict of Babylon, the edict of the peoples, to betray many, he, Israel, and what it says, goes back to chapter 10, verse 19, the remainder of trees of the wood will be a small number and a young man will count them. Its interpretation concerns the reduction of men. I'd love to know the blank spot on the rest of that, right? Then they quote Isaiah 10, verse 22. On that day it will happen that the remainder of the house of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will cease to lean on their assailant, but will lean loyally on Yahweh the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return, a remnant of Jacob to the God the warrior. Even if your people Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will return. Now we look at that as being, most of us, we always kind of looked at that as being, you know, the, the Jewish people returning back to the land in modern days. Watch what he says here. The interpretation of the word concerns the final days. They will go into captivity and what it says in Isaiah 10, 21 even if your people Israel were like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will return. Its interpretation concerns the reduction. Since it is written in Isaiah 22 and 23, extermination is decreed, but justice will overflow because destruction is decreed. The Lord Yahweh of hosts will execute it in the midst of the whole earth. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, do not fear my people who live in Zion. They're talking about an event that's going to wipe out mankind, both Jew and Gentile alike, that only a remnant will be left over. Look at what else it continues to say here. This is in fragment 4Q163. Interpretation of the world concerns the kings of Babylon, since as it is written in Isaiah 14, 8, the very cypresses laugh at you, and the cedars of Lebanon, since you lie down, the hewer does not come up against them. The cypress and the cedars of Lebanon are, and what it says in Isaiah 14, 26, 27, this is the strategy decided for all the earth, and this is the hand stretched out against all the peoples, for Yahweh of hosts has decided who will thwart him? His hand is stretched out. Who will push it aside? This is, as it is written in the book of Zechariah 3, nine. See, I will engrave its inscription of Oracle of Yahweh of host. Go on to Isaiah 14.28-30. In the year of the death of King uh, uh, Ahaz, this oracle was uttered. Do not rejoice, all Philistia, that the rod which injured you is shattered, because from the root of of the snake shall come a viper, and its fruit will be a flying asp. The most destitute will be fed, and the poor will lie down in safety, and I will make your root die in hunger, and he will kill your remnant. A flying asp. A draconian planet. A winged planet. A flying serpent. And isn't it interesting that as he spoke about the cedars of Lebanon, since you lie down, the hewer does not come up against them. What caused them to lie down? Well, if we go back over here, see, even here, Concerns the Babylon, the, rem the, the, the remainder of trees of the wood will be small number, and a young man will count them. Its interpretation concerns the reduction of men. I think it also refers to the reduction of plant life and tree life as well. That's just how destructive this force will be.
And of course, we're only getting just a small fragment of what's written here in the Dead Sea Scrolls about this. You know, but as you look at it and you begin to re-examine again, then it begins to make sense, especially in light of Malachi chapter 4. You know, when we read about, For behold, the day cometh and burneth as a furnace, and all the proud, all that work wickedness shall be stubble in the day that cometh shall set them ablaze at the Lord of hosts, and that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You know, as I mentioned to you, though, earlier, I said, you know, he says, Remember ye the law of my servant Moses, which I commanded him to whore up for all Israel, even the statutes and ordinances. I, I don't know for sure, but it makes me wonder, as you go back and look at that, watch the way it's written here in Deuteronomy. Uh, I believe it's chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, if I'm not mistaken here. Let me just double check. Chapter 4, I apologize. Assemble me the people, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire into the heart of heaven, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke unto you out of the midst of the fire, and you heard the voice of the words, but you saw no form, only a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he had commanded you to perform, even the ten words. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and ordinances, that you might do them in the land, whether you go over to possess it. When that judgment passed, and according to the Colbrin, it was the destroyer, the planet X, that came through. Could we have still been going through a time where it was at that time that God comes down and meets the children of Israel and, the, and, and everything is still a burning of fire and everything? I, I don't really know the answer to that, but I kind of can't help but wonder because of what Malachi states. He, he refers us back to that time period. So I went back and look at it, and then I'm seeing all this burned with a fire and a smoke and, you know, Darkness, cloud, thick darkness, etc. It makes you think. It really makes you think. You know, in closing, let me say this here. I want to go back to 2 Corinthians because I do want to do a separate video on this. When Paul writes to us here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, But I beseech you that I, not, that I, might, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh that's important right there friends for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, I forget exactly where it was as we were looking at the things that I've been sharing with you tonight, but one of the major things that takes place during this time of all this happening, maybe it was in the Colburn here, so I'll kind of see if I can back up and find it. Um, and let's see. The sun and the moon hid themselves. Where was it at there? And it fell upon one another's sins. Okay, yeah, madness broke out among men, frenzy and shouting. Then again, the tumult, which is like a, a, a like a fighting and everything, and clamor ceased, and all was silent. In the quiet stillness, madness broke, broke out among men, frenzy and shouting filled the air. They fell upon one another in senseless wanton bloodshed, and neither did they spare woman or child. We are discovering that as this system is coming in and everything I've been hearing over the last couple of years more and more and more the minds of the people are just going nuts um, the majority of the thoughts that come to your head are not even you 
might be your voice. You might hear it in your own voice and you think it's you, but it's not. And this is why when Paul speaks here, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know, let me see if I can pull that up real quick because um, let's see, we're in, what did I say we were in? Let me go back over here and find it again. 2 Corinthians, I believe. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 10. I feel so strongly right now that people need help to prepare to know what's coming. All right, here we go. Strongholds right here. Is fortified through the idea of holding safely a castle, a stronghold. Um, I, I'm just, I was looking to see if there were any of the words used like what we see um, uh, another place where Paul speaks about, you know, we, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, uh, let me just see if I can just pull that up for you. Ephesians 6, there we go. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. There you go right there. The principalities are archaea. That's archons. These are fallen angels. Um, and against powers. Uh, exosia. And uh, it's force, capacity, competency, freedom. You know, uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any particular thing I can look at there. Against the rulers um, of, dar of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take you on the whole armor of God. You know, these portals that are being opened, these things that are prophesied to be open, even the Euphrates and things of that nature there, they're symbolic, the words that are being used there. But in reality, these are some very demonic doorways that are being opened. And as these spirits are let loose on the earth, I can only imagine like what we read in the Colburn there. You know, they, they were dealing with murders and everything else. Everything was on the increase. They didn't care if it was a woman or child or anything. What are we going to be facing? We need to truly have on the full armor of God. We need to remember, as it says in 2 Corinthians, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought through the obedience of Christ. Don't let these things rule your mind. First recognize, that's why Paul says, try the spirits, right? Let's see if I can find that one for you as well real quick. Try the spirits, See if they are of God. Okay? First, actually, actually, John that wrote that. Beloved, believe not every spirit. There you are right there. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And we're not just talking about false, or, well, even with the false prophets, because believe me, you know, and that, that in itself, many false prophets have gone out into the world, right? Think about that, and then think about where we read here, casting down imagination of every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If people are being bombarded for evil in this day and age, what about those religious spirits? What was that other scripture there? Satan appears as an angel of light, right? 
Second Corinthians, and, and isn't it interesting that it happens to be in Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, the very next chapter? Let's back up. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Wow. Maybe we should just jump over. Let's just jump over here into the scripture. Let's go up here. Let's jump over to that chapter. We can see it a little bit better there. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not with behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Um, let me see where that passage is as we get a little bit closer here before I... All right, it's down to verse 14. All right, so let's jump back over. All right, let's start with verse 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting of the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do. And I may cut off the occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may have found even as we. For as as for such are false apostles and deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself transformed to an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Think about it. Think about it, friends. That is powerful. So not just the evils and the murders and the adulteries and everything else, but his ministers will be transformed as ministers of righteousness. And don't kid yourself. Many of them will lead you right in to believing this right-wing theocracy happening in Israel right now that will bring about the Noahide laws. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Listen, thank you for your love, your support of this ministry. We can't do it without you. And we really greatly appreciate you supporting and giving to this ministry. Also, again, uh, we're going to be uh, meeting up with the people at EMP Shield very soon. And um, uh, I want to just remind you, they have new products and stuff. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're going there. And, I, and I'd heard about this one here, the little mini one that they have, EMP shield for like motorcycles, that type of thing there. 78% uh, smaller. Don't know if you need something like that, but I just figured I'd share that with you there. And also, when you do so, always remember when you add any EMP shield to a card, if you need that for, for, for your purposes there, don't forget the INL50 code. All right, and I'll make sure you can see that big enough because without that INL50 code on your on your thing there, uh, well, it doesn't give you 100, it gives you 50 off, but that's because I've clicked on a second thing already as, as why. So, which it also shows you that every time you add a product in there, if you're doing more than one, they're going to give you $50 off each and every time you do that. Uh, and it also helps support the work we do here. So we thank you. Uh, we know there's a lot of need for the EMP Shield for multiple reasons there. So thank you for your support, your love of this ministry. We greatly appreciate it. And I am still sending letters out uh, here, catching up on things there. And even going back to some that we've missed because of all the tragedy that the family has gone through here for over, over a year now. Uh, things really fell way behind and uh, I know uh, some people are asking about uh, my wife. They'd like to see more of her and just bear with her. Uh, it's, it's not easy for her right now. And so uh, she does what she can when she can. And you will be seeing more of her. It just it takes a little time and uh, she's going through a lot. So I just ask for you to be praying for her. And uh, uh, she is doing those things. And again, don't forget to sign up. Uh, she's doing the channel Odyssey where she's doing more dedicated work herself. And uh, and there again, as, as, as she's able to, uh, a lot is happening. There's a lot of good fixing about to happen. That's going to be hitting uh, the news very soon. 
and I think you'll have a better idea of what's going on when that happens. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for listening. You're watching Israeli News Live.